You guys, wait a minute. I just saw Swernarva. Hello. Yeah, of course, Hello. it's there. Dude, you got to say something. We got to hear your voice. <laughs> Can you hear us? I'm not sure if you can hear us. What is it like? It's the middle of the night over there. It's like midnight. Yeah. Can you hear us, Renova? Yes. Yeah? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey. Oh, I'm recording it. Okay, cool. Yay. Say say yeah. something else. Recording, yay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is uh, 9.33 p.m. night. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not that bad. 12 hours ahead of Eastern. Got it. 12 and a half. Oh, yeah, I can't do math. Come of on. Pacific, you mean. <laughs> I'm in Eastern hey, time so nice now. Hey, so nice to have you here, Swarnava. Hello? Hello, oh. yeah. Hello. Tang, it's also nice to have you here. I haven't seen you in a while. Maybe you were always face muted. I, I usually am face muted, actually. Unless yeah, I'm well, talking. Some people, some people actually, you know, remark that. <laughs> <laughs> so, is everybody here? Should we get started? Um, I think so. Anyway, so let's get started. Hello and welcome to one another amazing Sumo community meeting. I actually think I need to close the window because we can hear cars here. Yeah, I'll do that. So excuse us. It's very, very warm in Berlin. So we have like open, open windows everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, just leave. Okay. So how's everybody doing? Very good. And once again, hello, Swarnava. Welcome. It's great to see you. Um, Welcome. <laughs> so let's get started then. Uh, we have, I see no previous, previous action items. By the way, I pasted the um, either path for today in Sumo. So if you don't have it, just check it there. Um, so since we don't have any previous action items, let's just get started with Sumo Dev Update. Who wants to take that? Sure, I can do that. Um, it is our 15th sprint this year. And what we are doing right now is after the um, research that we did in the last sprint, we started implementing uh, all of our uh, Q3 projects at the same time, like one developer, one project. Um, and we can quickly go through what we are doing right now. So the localization dashboard uh, is getting new graphs and uh, links to active contributors uh, from the localization dashboards. And Rosanna is working on that together with uh, Ricky. If you have input on that, let both of them know. Uh, the localized KB search, we are actually doing the full implementation probably in this week. Uh, it turns out that it wasn't uh, a big project as far as we can tell right now. So uh, that will hopefully be done uh, this week and uh, Mike is working on that. Once that is implemented, uh, we will reach out to the non-English speakers amongst you so that we can test that. Uh, we have, I think, about 10 languages and uh, a good selection of, of those uh, spoken among our Sumo contributors and uh, Sumo staff. So yeah, expect uh, emails and messages uh, from us uh, once this has landed. Um, then open badges. Uh, we need to do some pre-work for the shared infrastructure before we can do any implementation on Sumo. So Will is currently working on that, getting uh, the library, it's called Django Badger, to work uh, and, and to support what we are trying to do. Um, so he's currently doing that. And then next uh, sprint, we will implement that and uh, have the first implementation of open badges on Sumo. Uh, uh, on the persona end, uh, we have set up our structure uh, for application. And once we have done that, uh, we will need to do uh, some, some improvements to 
allow changes of email addresses um, when you're using persona. Uh, so all of this is happening behind the flag. So no one is going to see any persona implementation until we switch the flag on, which it currently isn't. So that's currently being tested on staging. And um, yeah, that's what we are currently doing with our, with our uh, Q3 roadmap items. Um, and other than that, we have smaller 25% items that I'm not going to go through individually. You can see them listed on the etherpad. Sweet. All right. I see that Michael had a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Roland um, has been, uh, we, we have a design for a technical writing program badge. All can, right. Can we show that off, Roland? Uh, yes, if I can get my act together and put a link in there. I got it. Here, I'm okay. going to stick it there under that open badges. There's a link right. in the etherpad. So we basically have two efforts for open badges. One is that uh, we're going to do just as a one-off, as an experiment, to make sure we understand how to issue badges. We're doing a technical writing program badge, which Michael just put a link in. And we're just doing one badge. We design a whole family of badges, and those are the badges that Kadir was talking about that would be automatically issued by Sumo um, in our Django Banger. <laughs> Banger. Banger's a MASH implementation. Uh, Django Badger implementation. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. And hopefully um, I get approval. We will use the Mozilla Foundation badge server, and hopefully I can get approval to use those graphics that Michael just went to to issue the technical writing program badges this week um, to the Roughly half a dozen super awesome folks who've graduated from the technical writing program. Oh, that's super awesome news. That's so yeah, I, yeah. Hopefully, fingers crossed. It, it, uh, if it doesn't happen this week, it'll ha definitely happen next week. So, will this be available for for people who already graduated? Yes, well? and all uh, forward graduates. And thanks to Ken Saunders, uh, I will do a blog post about this yeah. on the Sumo blog when I when 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 I have all my. Uh, T's crossed and I's dotted. But yes, thanks Ken Saunders for uh, doing a sort of very agile uh, badge development with Michael and myself. Yeah, I, I wanted to thank you, Roland, also, Matt, especially Ken, thanks for helping us with these. Um, and thank you, Roland, for like doing this uh, with Ken. So it's, it's very cool that we have our first badge and it's designed you know, you know, by the community for the community. So thanks a lot for driving that. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Um, so yeah, exciting news happening in Sumo Dev. Um, any other questions for what's going on here? Uh, if not, let's just move to UX update, I guess, because you're the Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we're going to do this week is we, we are going to work on the UX for uh, the Persona implementation. And there are a number of open questions uh, that we have listed on the etherpad. So Ryan uh, Feely from the Persona team, their, their UX designer, is going to work with us on that. Uh, if you have any open questions that you would like to have answered before we get started on this, uh, make sure that you add, uh, add your questions to the etherpad so we can uh, talk about that too and get clarification before we start the implementation of this. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's Stop <laughs> tweaking my uh, my <laughs> clown's ear. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Too. Yeah, That's absolutely. Like, could you finish it like honk? Yeah. Um, <laughs> on time. On time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can can you maybe mute yourself? Uh, um, because uh, yeah, yeah. We, we can hear some okay. some street noises. And then you can unmute yourself uh, when you're going to speak. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, okay. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, any questions for UX and Kadir? Um, if not, let's just move on to the roundtable. Uh, so we have quite a few questions here. The first one is from Andrew, also known as Fear56. Uh, and he says that there are a lot of sync questions which are left unanswered on the SPORE forum and what can we do about this? Okay, that's interesting and that's very good to know. Uh, so thanks, Andrew, for, for posting this. Um, my question for you here would be to understand what exactly are the type of questions and why 
for example, you cannot answer those questions? Is it that we don't have um, enough information in the KB or is it anything else? Um, so I assume that our documentation in the KB about sync is pretty much up to date, right, Michael? Well, nothing's changed, yeah, because nothing's changed Not about sync. And there is nothing like we're crazy going on right now with things. It's, it's pretty much the same thing. I, that I don't know. Is there is there any particular sync problems happening right now? Be yeah, that I don't besides know. Besides the occasional, sometimes it doesn't work. It works fine for me. I have it like on like, mm -hmm. I don't know, five different computers over here. Yeah. They, they, so they have issues from time to time, for sure. That's why they're revamping it. You say that again, Roman? Okay. Um, sync has server issues from time to time, and I don't know the exact details. Um, mm -hmm. That's one of the many reasons we're revamping it. Um, but that's all I know. Okay. Cool. Well, then, I, what I suggest, Andrew, uh, if you can hear us, um, if we could make a quick list uh, with all those questions that are left unanswered and just have a look at them to make sure that there is nothing like crazy going on. There is not such some particular issue that just appeared and we don't know about. Um, and otherwise, it might be that just the documentation is not. Oh, thank you. There's <laughs> unsolved sync questions link. Okay. All right. Okay, then we'll just go through them um, and see if there is anything in particular about them that is um, that is weird, and then. Uh, contributors don't answer them. Otherwise, just might be that you know, people find it um, that more difficult because it's just pulsing. But actually, the one that I see, they all have replies. Anyway, let me go through this list. Um, so, Andrew, let's talk afterwards about it. Uh, that would be awesome. So, I understand what was going on. All right, cool. Uh, there is another question. Uh, contributors should be aware of the article discussion section of Sumo. So sometimes their feedback may be useful here. So in case you guys did not know about the article discussion section, check it out there. Um, there's a link. Um, this is very important. So to be to be clear about what this is, you know, each article has its own discussion forum. And this link is all the latest posts aggregated from all the article discussion forums. So yeah, it's a good it's a good place if if you're interested in in uh, particular articles. Um, you know, you can subscribe to the discussion forum of a particular article, but um, especially if you're just working on the KB in general, this is a good place to check for conversations about articles. Yep. So thanks for posting this. Um, and yeah, don't forget to, to check the link there. Cool. OK. Uh, there's another question from Sohava. Any updates on this bug? Um, yeah, I um, I think that we have this bug. We, like, verbatim is kind of broken for Sumo right now. And there's a couple of people from the Elton and Tin working on it. Uh, Kadir, I think you're also uh, aware of it. It's just three people are working on it right now. And uh, wow. that's what they're telling me. And we need to wait for them to fix it, right? Yeah, I, I'm in contact with the Elton and Tin uh, over, over this. It's unfortunately slow going i know it's been 10 days uh they had a work week so it came also at a really bad time for them um i'll try to uh i mean at this point essentially they're working on it so we are waiting for them to to finish their work on this um and we are trying to be responsive so hopefully we will have this done this week but I yeah. can't give you a time, well, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just that so, the alternate team is working on it. So I know exactly. I have the same information as Kadir has. Um, there are three people from the alternate team trying to fix this, um, but uh, we'll have to wait. So just cross our fingers and hope that, that it'll be done 
but thanks a lot for, for bringing this up. I know, yeah, <laughs> I know how much, uh, you know, how much uh, all the localizers are looking forward to this. Maybe I'll, I'm going to update the thread in the forum so that, you know, people know that, you know, we're aware and that we are hoping that it will be fixed soon. Thanks. Okay, cool. Okay, um, so I guess we can move on. Uh, Amit has another question. There are a lot of outdated articles like this one. Should they be updated or removed? So what to do in case of uh, updated, oh, sorry, of outdated uh, articles? So maybe. Yeah. I'm, I'm unsure what they're asking because that one right there is archived. So what we do is we have a, a feature that called, we mark an, an article as obsolete. And it's a way of, it removes it from the Sumo information architecture. It removes it from Sumo searches. And we ask like search engines to not to index it anymore. Um, but it's still findable through an advanced search. And we do that because Sometimes things change and those things become issues again or, or, um, or they're relevant again and then we can just uncheck a box and that article is active again. Um, or um, in the future we write something and some of that information is, um, we can reuse it. So uh, instead of just zapping an article and deleting it, we hide it from everybody except for contributors. Um, so that we have the possibility of either reactivating or scavenging some information from that article in the future. Um, but yes, in general, um, we should go through uh, articles that are old, that haven't been updated in a long time, that don't get very many views, um, especially things that are like um, troubleshooting articles, problems to see, are these still a problem? Nobody's right. going to these articles. Maybe they should just be archived. Uh, and so, it's something that we do from time to time. Right. So it's definitely a great point. Thanks, Amit. I, I know Amit, you've been doing a lot of research and doing a lot of articles. So thanks a lot. I think this is this is good. Michael, do you think that we should, you know, from time to time, maybe have a little task force for like finding articles that should get an archive? Well, what you should do is either um, start a discussion on that article. Title right. your discar your discussion like archive question mark or something, or right. if if you are a researcher or a reviewer, um, edit the article and uh, put a needs changes note that um, says maybe it should you know archive question right. mark or something so that uh, we can find that. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Michael. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in the etherpad. Um, and yeah, I mean, thanks a lot for 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 bringing this up. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, everybody, for um, all your questions in the roundtable. Um, I okay. hope. Hey, this is Michelle. I wanted to um, just comment on. I talked to Amit this weekend a little bit about this, and he was also finding those links through the profiles. Was how he was getting to them. I don't know if that's useful. Through I use. I think it's still good. To I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Michelle. Through <clears throat> through contributors' profiles, like the documents exactly. they've worked on. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um, Amit did want to join the editors group, so I added him to the KB editors group. So if you see Amit Shri around, he's new. Okay. Welcome him. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle. Um, so let's move on to Firefox desktop. Who wants to take this one? I can take that one. So a uh, big thing this week is Sentiment Report 22. Um, so the mobile sentiment report is ready to go. You should be seeing that in the next day or so. Uh, we're still waiting on some data for the desktop version. we got to get the uh, snippet survey data back. Uh, but we're hoping to push that later this week. And we are prepping for 23. So um, everything look, looks pretty good. So it's always a good place to be. Right. Any questions for Matt and the uh, desktop? If not, we can move to Firefox or Android. Roland. 
Oh, hello. Uh, Swernova gone? Swernova is helping with some last minute Firefox 23 updates. Um, and we are doing the research for Firefox 24. And I'm a long, I'm a long admirer of Michael's What's Happening in Sumo posts, which generally come up Monday or Tuesday. Is that correct, Michael? So I've decided like, to highlight, I will always link to Michael's posts for the general picture, but I do a weekly what's happening in Android posts. Because to me, it's not clear. If I make a list pointing to all the threads that are happening specifically to Android, I think that will be helpful. Um, so that's what I plan on doing on Tuesday and Wednesday, assuming Michael still does his Monday or Tuesday what's happening sumo. Is that the general plan going forward? You continue with those? Yeah, I almost always do them on Monday afternoon after the meeting. Perfect. Yep. And well, yes, yeah, so we're ongoing a research, which ends this week, correct, for 24? Um, and the big thing is the Android permission bump um, in 24. But there's other uh, small things to do in 24. All right. Great stuff. Thanks, Roland. Any questions for Roland? I feel like I'm interrogating him. <laughs> That's okay. I see. Feel free to interrogate me anytime. Just smile. Yeah, That's all. Why are you always so happy on Monday mornings? Yeah, what's up with that? Because uh, <laughs> I've had three coffees. That's why. <laughs> <coughs> okay, cool. That's a good one. Cool. Um, all right, Firefox OS. Michelle, do you have any updates on this one? Hello? Maybe Hermina can help us there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I will, uh, I will jump in then. Uh, so, not lots of updates from us for, for this week. It's just that we've already started scoping the version 1.1 for the Geekscom. So, we're um, uh, we're somehow playing with it, with it and discovering the new version. And um, an uh, update from, from our partners. We've had our first partner escalation on Friday from Deutsche Telekom. And uh, it's, it was an issue I um, put about there, so you can, you can all see it. It was uh, like the user was was charged, but uh, not able to install an app. So we are uh, we are investigating on uh, on the issue, and uh, we will we'll give you updates once we have them. Uh, that's all from from me for for this week. Great, great stuff. Uh, any questions? Oh, and I would just add, um, I have been looking at the one dot one features, and the list is not small. So we'll have plenty to do. For all of you um, budding tech writers, I think there's 40 new features, 40 new user stories that we could look through and pick from to uh, get documented. Thanks for a minute. All right, thanks, Michelle. Anything to add? Anybody? Questions? Okay. Cool. Um, let's move on then to Thunderbird. Back at you, Roland. All right. Uh, so as I keep saying, week after week, uh, please help Thunderbird uh, 24, our next general release. It's currently in Aurora. It would be so great if you could back up your email and help test us. Although I never back up my email because I don't care about email, really. Uh, other than to communicate with you lovely folks. I just test it without backing up email. But for normal people, I recommend back up your email testing Fire Thunderbird 24. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> not listen to Roland who does not back up his email. Everybody else please do. Uh, That's Roland. actually not true. I do have a backup, but I don't really, uh, you know how you re it. religiously back up everything else? I don't religiously back it up, but I do have a backup. You just want to be cool like that. No, I just want to be silly. <laughs> Roland, no backup. All right, thanks, Roland. Um, I guess that was not the question. Um, all right, uh, I need to ask you guys if you don't speak, please mute, because we have quite a lot of uh, background noise. Thanks. OK, uh, let's move on to metrics. Good year. All right. Um, yeah, essentially, I mean, mostly we are still flat. I don't know exactly what it is. It might be because of the summer. But uh, there are two things that I wanted to draw your attention to. Uh, uh, at least one of those we should probably do something about. One of them is the L10N numbers. Um, 
we, we had a big push, uh, I think about two or three weeks ago, uh, when a large number of articles saw a small amount of changes. Um, and that pushed down our number uh, for the localization coverage. Um, unfortunately, since then, it hasn't recovered. So maybe uh, it would be helpful to do something about that in terms of like uh, looking at which uh, at, at the top articles and maybe uh, giving localizers an overview of what has changed. It can be daunting if you see a lot of changes on the uh, localization dashboard and you don't go through each of the changes to see what has happened there. Maybe it will be helpful to actually reach out to localizers and tell them, okay, this we changed a lot of articles, but those articles, they actually saw a small amount of changes. Um, so if you focus on the top 20 articles and look at the small changes that are made there, there is a good chance uh, that you will be able to, to reach uh, a significant portion of your users but just by making those changes. Um, or, or anything else, but that's... Yeah. Uh... Absolutely, no, I think that what, what, what happened is, of course, that there were a lot of changes, and with the Firefox OS, um, um, uh, new articles. Also, I think that at least, we you know, we have many of the locales who have, you know, the biggest weight for, the, for our KPI, uh, our locales in the northern part, uh, and we have summer here, so maybe some people <laughs> are on vacation, so we need to follow up on that. Um, but for sure, Michael sends always a list with the prioritized list of articles that should be localized. I'm going to follow up with the localizers, um, but that could be also uh, an option. I can, I can take a look at, at the biggest locales. I know that, that for instance, uh, uh, in, we had some, I think that a couple of localizers were on vacation, so maybe that, that, that can have a big, big impact. Yeah, I think this is pretty common. Uh, during like summer days, we usually find like our metrics are down uh, all over, not only LTMN. So I would assume this is like something pretty much yeah, common. But I will, I will definitely follow up. Thanks for, for bringing it up. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Okay, then I I have one uh, I have a second thing, and that is finally we have results from the uh, exit survey on the KPI dashboard. And I wanted to take this opportunity to talk uh, very quickly about the exit survey for people who don't know what it is. Um, so essentially, for f about four percent of our users, when they come to our site, we ask them to give us their email address uh, so that we can send them a survey later on. So they give us their email address, and 24 hours later. We sent them uh, an email asking them to complete the survey. There are a number of questions on that survey, and one of that uh, questions, where, where the basic question is, uh, did you find what you were looking for? Um, so that, that's like the baseline question. If we can't uh, provide people with what they're looking for, then, um, well, that's, that's pretty bad. Uh, so uh, we took that baseline question from the exit survey and uh, are aggregating that now on the uh, KPI dashboard. And you can see it when you scroll down way to the bottom of, uh, of the KPI dashboard. Maybe it should go to the top because it's like the highest level indicator. Uh, but right now it sits at the bottom and um, it doesn't have the heading that it should have. So we are going to uh, work on that. But I put the question in the either pad too. The question is, did you find what you were looking for? And right now, uh, the answer is about 50% uh, uh, who say, yes, I did find what I was looking for. So it's good to know uh, that we are helping a lot of people, but it's also interesting to see that we still have some room up there uh, into which we can grow, hopefully. But yes, this is the first uh, time that we are uh, aggregating exit survey results, and I wanted to give you an update on that. Also, keep in mind, uh, there is a 10% uh, uh, confidence interval on those numbers for now. We are hopefully going to drive that down in the future, but right now it's a 10% interval. If it says 50% helpful, it could be that we are actually at 40%, or it could be that we are at 60%. That's the interval. Keep that in mind. And yeah. That's all I have. So thanks, Kadir. Uh, do you have, uh, is there any way for us to see the survey results somewhere? Or can yes. you just paste them here? That's on the KPI. Oh, on the dashboard, OK. Yes, when you scroll down to the, to the bottom of the KPI dashboard, 
uh, you can see the results there. And the one that you will, you probably want to look at is the red line, which says, yes, that's the percentage of people who say we, they did find what they were looking for on our side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if anybody is interested in that, uh, don't forget to scroll down, down, down to the bottom. I'm just uh, on the page there. Um, okay, that sounds great. Thank you so much, Kadir. Do you, anybody has any questions about metrics, dashboards, Kadir? All right. If not, let's move on to knowledge base. Michael. Um, Firefox 24 research still going on this week. Um, and just to let you know, I will be pretty much out of touch Wednesday through Friday, traveling to Columbia to test Firefox OS phones. All right. Nice. Somebody will have some fun. Have to pack my, I have to pack my winter clothes, which apparently is pretty much the same weather as San Francisco, which I'll be going to <laughs> next, so. Yeah. But just also have some shirts if, if there's sun. It might get warm, so. It might get warm. Extremely warm. You yeah, I mean like just like San Francisco <laughs> might get warm, right? Right, right. Yeah, it's like San Francisco, pretty much, exactly. Can be cold, can be warm. <laughs> all right. Thanks for sharing, Michael. We all envy you. Um, any questions for Michael? If not, let's move on to Elton and. Okay, I have a couple of updates on LPN. Um, so the two things that we already talked about verbatim, uh, we have the LPN team working on it. Uh, it's been 11 days, so we really hope it's gonna get fixed and Kadir and I are on it. So, uh, you know, hang with us, we'll, we'll, we'll get that fixed. Then again, the articles for, you know, we had so many updates for Firefox and, you know, it might be a lot of work. So just help us and, you know, Let's get together and, and, and try to bring the, the coverage up. That's the thing. And then I wanted to show you some a couple of new things. Uh, Ricky built uh, pretty cool features. So now what we have is if you go to the locale dashboard, uh, you can see on the left side a link to the team. And then if you click on it, um, you're going to see that we have, I put the Spanish team so that you can get an idea. You click on it, and then you see the localization team. You can see the locale leaders, you can see the reviewers, then you can see the editors, and you can see the people who have been active in that locale in the past 90 days. So if you are trying to get a Whoa, hold of... Oh, nice. Yeah, so if you're trying to get a hold of the people of the locale, if you're coming to... If you're new to Sumo and you want to know who has been active in the last 90 days, maybe the locale leader is on vacation or maybe that person hasn't been responding, you will now will have an idea of who has been actually active in the past 90 days. Yeah, Michael? Yeah, I saw this looks really cool. Can can we get this for English too? <laughs> oh, it doesn't work for English? It doesn't. It would be great. I was about to hack the URL it. to put an EN. Oh, it doesn't work for EN. Yeah, you're right. Oh, oh my God. So we found, we found, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. File a bug, Rosetta. We'll tell Ricky. But yeah, it, this is actually pretty cool. And I'm, I'm very happy and, and I hope that this will help uh, new contributors, but also locale leaders and, and, and people in the locale to have you know a rough idea of who has been contributing in the last three months. It's it's a big range of time, but I think that someone who has contributed in the past three months is someone that can still you know is knowledgeable about what's going on and can be still reactivated. So that's why we chose three months, even if it's a very long a time. So yeah, there it is, and now you know how to find active people in the locales. Thanks, Ricky, for doing this. It was like super quick. Yes, Ricky, you're awesome. You're rock. Thank you so much. And I guess you're not on the call, but please, please do watch this afterwards, just to hear, so that you can hear how awesome you are. All right, uh, that's great stuff. Uh, thanks, Rosanna. Any questions for Rosanna? And Elton N. All right, uh, then we can just move on to the support forum. Uh, so, as many of you know, we have a new Sumo Day this week. This will happen on Thursday, our August 1st. So please join us uh, and answer as many questions as you can. We're still still trying to get to the 100% um, answer rate and of course to a very, very high solve rate. So lots of work to do there. Um, and of course, due to holidays, we noticed a drop, of, uh, a drop in the number of both questions and contributions. 
So there's not a lot of activity happening right now in the forum, uh, but still enough questions for uh, us to be busy. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that everybody can join on, on Thursday and we make this an awesome new Sumo day. And that's about it for me. Any questions about the support form? All right, then let's move on to the most important part of this whole meeting, which is the contributor of the week. Um, so I actually see a nomination from Andrew and thanks so much, Andrew, for doing this. Yes. Please, everybody, contributor or non-contributor, please feel free to nominate if you think somebody did a great job. So it's not about only about us to nominate. Um, so Andrew is nominating Amitri for adding shared article templates to about 16 articles all at once. And then another 16 were added <laughs> the following day, which is great. Um, so great job, Amitri. Uh, thank you so much. You are the official contributor of the week. Yeah, I just wanted to add something to that. Uh, so you've been doing a great job in the in the KD and in localization and the forum and the forum and uh, being a body. So you know you totally ramp up. I know that you haven't been in Sumo for a long time, but you know totally flying. So that's amazing. Is that the unicorn? <laughs> that was the unicorn. Sorry. Wasn't it? Oh, it wasn't. That the was unicorn. my phone. <laughs> that the unicorn calling. You did not shut. Down your button. You have to do some unicorn stuff, Patrick. That's it. I have to do unicorn stuff. You need to find something there. All right. So one of the things that uh, brought my wife and I together are our love of Legos. This was the first Lego that I ever gave her. It was a uh, Speed Racer. He's kind of uh, seen better days at this point. That's so cool. But we also have, uh, I don't know if I showed you guys during the, the last work week, but when I proposed to my wife, I gave her a Lego ring. So when I designed mine, I got the reverse of the Lego ring. So That's we love Legos lots. <laughs> and it even works like I can. That's awesome. Yeah, I can connect. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out if this is cooler than Michael's uh, <laughs> Star Wars. But it's, it's just cool. cool. Period. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Pretty much beats everything that we've seen until now. I like a ring. Yeah, I really like it. I really yeah. like it. Now, anytime we're we're having deep discussions or or things where uh, we're discussing life decisions and stuff like that, we connect our rings. Makes us stronger. Oh. <laughs> like the one. <laughs> that's exactly the. That's the exactly the reaction I hope for when I tell that story. Everybody in the room going, "Oh, that's so cute." That's awesome. <laughs> okay, that that was pretty good, huh? Yeah, yeah. Whoever is up for next week, next week's unicorn, you have a lot to fight with. Yeah. So you need to be better than the Lego ring. <laughs> very very tough okay well i guess that's about it um we have uh, one action item for myself to follow up with andrea on the same questions uh by the way if during this sumo day on thursday you see anything crazy about sync uh please let me know and i see that i think it's Ava, who added this here, uh, he wrote um, a blog post about how to back up your contacts using Android debug bundles. Uh, so thanks so much, Ava, for this. Please read it. It's very, very interesting and very, very cool. Uh, so now we rock. Hey, yes. I, have a, I have a quick question. Maybe one of you guys knows this answer. So I flashed my Geeks phone to 1.1. 1 .1. And now um, all over the air updates don't work, which I think should be expected. Does that mean I need to manually do the updates, like reflash it every time? And then, and then I should back up my stuff because I'm going to lose everything every time I do that? Do you, anybody know the answer to that? <laughs> yeah, I, can I, that I was seeing the Michael. same. I'm sorry, Michelle, did you say something? Yeah, that's right. I think once you flash your 
you're out of luck for over the air. Okay. Um, I do have a script for backing up your contacts. I can dig up and send to you. Is that the one that, that Swarnava wrote about in his blog post? Um, I don't know. Okay. He's got a little He's thing to do that, I think. Oh, for contacts? Yeah. Between flashing. Okay, that's the only one I have as far as saving your data. Cool. All right, so if anybody has any solution for Michael, please let Michael know. <laughs> and then us as well. It's interesting to find out how to solve that. All right. <laughs> Well, I guess that's it. Uh, thanks everybody so much for attending. Thanks to our contributors who are here. Uh, I'm afraid I don't see everybody's name uh, because on this big screen we cannot do this. But thanks for attending. Thanks for listening. Thanks for participating. Uh, and have an amazing week. And see you soon. Yeah. Again. Ciao. Bye. Cheers. Ciao. Safe Bye. travels, Michael. Bye.